Good morning, everyone. Welcome to ANC Online. My name is Todd Pulsifer. I'm one of the leaders here at All Nations Church. And it is a pleasure to welcome you, uh, whether you're a guest or a member of All Nations, to our Sunday morning online meeting. And we're going to spend some time in God's Word. I pray that you find it refreshing, challenging, and useful, as all of the Word of God is. So have a listen, and we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Well, hello, lovely friends, and welcome to everyone joining today. My name is Lee, and my husband James and I lead a lovely church community called Lifehouse in Mississauga. And it's my joy and privilege to get to share a few thoughts with you today that uh, fit within the um, ongoing series that Steve is currently doing called No Grow go together. And this message fits within the third part, which is go. And I've entitled it, Therefore Go. So let's dive in and see what we can discover together. Now, I am, as you can probably tell, originally from South Africa. And when I was eight years old, I had the most wonderful grade school teacher. I went to a public school in South Africa. And um, this teacher of mine was larger than life in every possible way. She wore flowing dresses and had lovely long dark hair. And she wore these big round glasses. And uh, she just loved her students so well. And she exuded exuded the love of Jesus in everything that she did. Her name was Mrs. Lutzius, and she would always read us these different stories. And one of the stories she read to us as a class was Pilgrim's Progress. And when she finished, she invited anyone who wanted to know Jesus to stay after school, and she would tell us how we could know him. And so five of us stayed behind that day and we met Jesus. And I remember being filled with this irrepressible joy and running all the way home and bursting into my house and saying, Mommy, Mommy, I gave my life to Jesus. And my mom said, what did you do that for? And of course, her only Christian frame of reference at the time was uh, that of the Catholic Church that she'd been brought up in. And so she did not understand what it meant to have a relationship with Jesus. But the beautiful thing is that within a year she was saved too and one by one my whole family got to know Jesus. The amazing thing about my teacher Mrs. Lucius was that she didn't just introduce me to Jesus what she did was she discipled me. She helped me know and grow and she gave me this little box of uh, scripture verses and one of my favorite um, and the one that I memorized first was Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20 and I want to read that for you today because this is our anchor text for what we're speaking about today. So Matthew 28 starting in verse 18 it says then Jesus came to them and he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So let's look at verse uh, 18 first. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This is Jesus speaking. Now in Ephesians 1, it unpacks this truth um, in more detail. In Ephesians 1, Paul is explaining this truth to us and he, he talks to us about how Jesus is seated far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, uh, far above every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Uh, Paul tells us that God has placed all things under Jesus' feet and he has appointed him to be head over everything for the church. 
And then in Colossians 1, verses 16 through 18, it is one of the most magnificent descriptions of, um, of who Jesus is. I love, love, love uh, these couple of verses. And let me read it to you. Colossians 1. This is, again, it's just unpacking the truth that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And so in Colossians 1, it says, For in him, in Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he may have the supremacy isn't that magnificent i just i get so delighted when i read um, those scriptures because i i feel like it's a it's a pronouncement that just covers everything it's like here we go this is it if ever there was a mic drop moment i feel that colossians 1 is god's mic drop moment where he's like and that's it and uh so i just i just love that but so colossians 1 is speaking into what jesus is saying in verse 18 of Matthew 28. And so those two scriptures just beautifully round out and really explain the fullness of what Jesus is saying when he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, in verse 19, it starts with the word, therefore. And I'm sure many of us realize that in scripture, when the word therefore um, is seen, we need to actually stop and actually ask, what is it therefore? And um, Jesus is saying to us, as a result of the truth that he has um, stated in verse 18, here is the response. And so he says, therefore, on the basis of the fact that I have all authority in heaven and earth, your response is to go. And um, our only acceptable, honestly, response, I think, as disciples and followers of Jesus, when we understand the truth that all authority rests in him, our only acceptable response is to say, I will go and make disciples so that others can come and follow you as well, Lord. We are called to be demonstrators of the glory of God in the earth. And um, Steve said something so wonderful a couple of weeks ago when he was um, teaching on the fact that we are to grow in Christ. And he was, he was speaking about the truth of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And uh, Steve said this, he said, the only way the earth will know God and everything he is and everything he does, the only way the people of the earth will know his power and his presence, his character and his nature, is when they encounter men and women who have themselves seen him and have been transformed by him. And then Steve went on to say that transformed people transform the people around them. Jesus said it in this way, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now my teacher, I really believe, understood that to go did not necessarily mean she had to go across the world, that she had to move countries. For her, going meant intentionally seeing who was before her and viewing us as her students, as precious children that God adored and wanted to reach. And so years later, when God did actually call me to literally move halfway across the earth from South Africa to Canada to be part of a church plant, I really believe it was as a direct result of my precious teacher's initial choice to very intentionally go and influence the world that was around her. She chose to influence her sphere of influence, 
which was her classroom and her students. And I am forever grateful. And I know that uh, one day when I get to heaven, one of my first requests is going to be um, of Jesus. If I could please meet up with her and thank her for her investment in my life. Ooh, it, always, uh, it always makes me uh, want to cry when I think about it because um, I start to wonder what would have happened if she had not had a going mindset. Unfortunately, what has happened so often in the church is that we have cultivated a gathering culture as opposed to a going culture. And what I mean by that is that so often um, we find situations where uh, church communities would rather raise money and support a missionary who is then the person that is sent and who goes and the whole responsibility of, of reaching other people is, is basically put onto this person or this group of people. Um, and so people would rather like raise money and then kind of sit back and enjoy the, the gathering as opposed to understanding that every single one of us as the priesthood of all believers has been called by Jesus to have a going mindset. And so uh, what we see is that um, missionary organizations um, sprung up across the world. Um, these precious people who did have an understanding um, that, that we've been commissioned to go were brave enough to go, well, if the church isn't going to do it, I will do it. And so many of these organizations sprung up. And, and thank God they did, because there's so many people groups that have been reached and so many communities that have been beautifully impacted with the gospel because of these wonderful missionaries who chose to take Jesus seriously. But God's plan was not mission organizations. God's plan was that through the local church, disciples would be made. And then we would all have an understanding that we are to go and to impact our sphere of influence with the gospel. So often it drives me quite crazy when I'm, I'm reading a Bible and, um, and I'm flipping through the maps that are sometimes in the back of some Bibles and they're always titled things like Paul's first or Paul's second missionary journey. And I, I always want to like say, no, it wasn't a missionary journey. It was an apostolic journey. Let's use scriptural language to describe what was actually going on. And he, he, was, he was apostolic. And what Paul did, he didn't start missionary organizations. Paul planted local churches. He raised up leaders. He raised up elders and local beautiful church communities who had a mindset um, to go and to reach their sphere of influence were started. So you can hear I'm quite passionate about this, but, but so much damage has been done because the church has lost this going mentality or culture. And um, every one of us, the truth is that every one of us is called to go in one capacity or another. I bless every person who, who has been involved in a mission organization. And if, if you're watching this and, and that, is your, that is your history and that is what you're a part of, bless you for your precious heart and your fervency in wanting to advance God's kingdom and to take the gospel to the corners of the earth. And, and I know that there is a wonderful reward for you in that. But um, I... I also want to apologize on behalf of so many churches that have not taken care of the people who have gone out. We have met so many wonderful people who have been involved in missions and they have been poorly treated, uh, they have been treated so often as an afterthought and if that has been your experience, I, I just um, want to really apologize on behalf of those who didn't understand what they were doing because you are precious and you are important and you have done such a beautiful and vital um, thing in advancing God's kingdom. But I urge every one of us as the priesthood of all believers, it is time for us to put off just having a gathering mindset and to really allow the Holy Spirit to grow in us and not only an understanding but a commitment 
to going. Outreaches to different regions of the world are amazing and, and I've been part of a lot of different outreaches and I'm sure many of you watching have been as well and they're wonderful. It's a time where you grow and learn. Um, it's an opportunity to take the gospel into different places. But you know, honestly, I have found that it is sometimes harder to go across the street or to engage with my neighbor than it is to go on a short-term outreach somewhere else in the world. I find it more challenging, I find it more costly to go across the street than to go across the world. But the reality is, is that we are called to go everywhere. Jesus said we are to go to our neighbors, we're to go across the street, down the road, to our towns, our communities, our regions, territories, neighboring countries, and then to the outermost parts of the earth. It's all encompassing and it's going to take all of us to achieve it. It is a conscious decision and um, I think that part of the intention of doing this series was to hold before us um, what Jesus has actually asked his church to do. Um, both with him and through him. And, um, and so I really trust that, that as we are chatting about this, um, something has been stirred in you. And I would just ask that you would ask the Holy Spirit to, to really um, speak to you about where it is that he is, is urging you to go in this season. My son um, gave his life to Jesus when he was six years old. We have two boys, and my, my youngest son is now eight. And, uh, but when he was six, he gave his life to Jesus. And um, when he did that, I said to him, why don't you ask Father God what it is that he has for you to do? Um, I spoke to him about Matthew 28. I spoke to him about the fact that Jesus has called all of us to go and make disciples. And um, I said to him, why don't you go and have a conversation with Father God and, uh, and see what he wants to say to you? And um, he went off and he came back a little while later and he just said, Mom, Jesus told me that I have to go and tell people about him so that they can become part of his family too. And mom, he said, it's not just me that has to do that. Jesus said our whole family has to do this. And I said to him, that's amazing. That is so exciting. That is exactly what Jesus has called us to do. And I showed him in scripture the different things that, that Jesus had, had said. And uh, he was really excited. And then a day or two later, he was looking really, really glum. And um, I just said to him, Sethi, what's wrong? You, you're just looking really um, down in the dumps. And uh, he's not normally like that. And he just gave out this, let out this big sigh. And he just said to me, Mom, I just want to know, when does my job that Jesus gave me, when, when does it start? When, I, when can I start to do this? <laughs> and I just thought, oh my gosh, what a beautiful question. And I just said to him, Seth, it starts now. And the joy in his face that he could actually be a part of this and he didn't have to wait till he was grown up. He could actually start living in the fullness of this now. Just so delighted his little heart. And I, I think it actually delighted the Lord's heart as well. And um, I just thought, oh, if only all of us could have that attitude of, Lord, you have said, therefore go, when do I start? And I just feel like God's answer is the same as my answer. It's now, let's go. So who is called and qualified to go? Well, really, it's everyone who belongs to Jesus. It's all of us, adults and children alike. Sometimes children are the most effective messengers of the gospel because they keep it simple and they're very direct. They don't have any political inclinations. They're not, they're not too politically correct. They just tell it like it is. And what does it require? Well, it's going to require us knowing our God, which is what we've been speaking about, and uh, understanding that he lives with us and in us and that uh, he um, causes his power to work so powerfully in us to perform his will through us. And um, I think we just need to acknowledge that 
It's his will that every single person be saved and come into fellowship with him. We are his ministers of reconciliation. We're his ambassadors of his kingdom and of the message of the good news of reconciliation. And so we are called to go across the street and across the world, if that's where he would have us be. Um, he determines where it is that he sends us, but we have to settle the fact that he has called us as his children to go. In, um, in Psalm 107, it says, blessed are those who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. And it talks about the fact that wherever they go, they make it a place of springs. Life results because they are there. And that is the testimony that we as God's children are meant to have as well. So really going is just the, the natural result of truly knowing our King. It's knowing Him. We then grow in Him and we therefore go in Him to the world around us so that they may see Him and come to know Him too. Now, I don't know about you, but um, in this pandemic time, um, a song that has meant so much to me, and I think a song that has been an anthem throughout the world, really, has been the song, The Blessing. And I just want to read a particular portion for you, because when I was preparing this, I just felt God just showing me and saying to me, Lee, if this, if this is my heart for you and for all people, then, then how can my children not go? And um, how, can they, how can they not have um, a going culture if this is who I am and this is my heart? And let me just read some of the words of the blessing. Um, it, says, it says, may his favor surround you and a thousand generations um, and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, he is for you. He is for you. He is for you. And so really my question for all of us is how can we not go? If that is the heart of our Father, if that is the heart of our Savior, who was the first one to go so that we would know him, then how can we not have the attitude that says, I will go, Lord, because you are the one that lives with me and in me. You are the one that hems me in before and behind. You, you, go, you go ahead of me. You have already prepared things in advance for me to walk in. And you live in me. You are Christ in me, the hope of glory. How can we hold back? when the one living inside us is the one saying to every person that we encounter, I am for you. I am for you. I want to be with you. I have poured my life out for you. He is the one that says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. And honestly, friends, he's asking us as his children, as his disciples, as his followers. He's saying, will you be the ones that will therefore go? Will you be the ones that will reach out to those that are around you so that they can know me in this way too? So for us, what is God saying to us through all of this? Well, first of all, I just felt him say, I want to assure every one of you that are listening to this that you are in a very safe position in him. And uh, just two scriptures in 1 John 4, 4, it says, Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And you can just rest in that truth. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. We have nothing to fear and we are never alone 
in our going, we have the Lord of the universe, the God of all creation, going alongside us, going with us. And it is his power that is working through us as we go. And then in Matthew 10, it, uh, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And then, he, um, secondly, he just holds out his plan to us and he invites us to come in and partner with him to bring his plan to fruition. And um, as believers, it's really, really important that every one of us understand that we are all in full-time ministry. As God advances his kingdom into er every area of society, he does it through all of us. We are all in full-time ministry. We are all called to advance his kingdom, to, to go and make disciples, to take the gospel to whoever we have an influence over. So whatever your sphere of influence is, you are called to go into that area today. In 1 Peter 2.9, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Listen to that, that we get the privilege of proclaiming the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. What a beautiful partnership and what an invitation. So friends, really in conclusion, um, I really just trust that some of these thoughts are just helping to establish the truth that we are called to go, that we are called to make disciples, that we are called to take the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world around us. It's going to take every single one of us doing this with, with all our hearts in partnership with the Holy Spirit in order to reach the precious people that Jesus is longing to reach. So very practically, to advance God's kingdom, to make disciples and to grow in our go, how do we begin? What are some practical steps? And um, the first thing I would suggest that we all do is that we pray and we prophesy. And why I, I really highlight prophecy is that uh, Sean Boltz says this wonderful thing. He says that the goal of prophecy is to connect people to the empowering nature of God so that they can become like him and they can display his marvelous nature to all the earth. And so when we pray, I'm going to urge us to be people who pray big, bold, hairy, audacious prayers because God is the God who can do everything. He, he is the God of the impossible. And so I think where we start in our going is that we look at the circumstances that are around us. We look at the people that are, that are in our sphere of influence right now. And we start to talk to the Lord about them. And we ask the Lord what he thinks about those situations or those people. And then as he shares his heart for those people, we can begin to prophesy the things that God is sharing with us. And when we spend time praying and prophesying um, and imagining what are those people going to be like once they know Jesus, how is this situation going to change um, when the people involved in the situation invite Jesus into the midst of them? And when we start praying and prophesying like that, exciting things start to happen. And so step number two is that we, we make a determined effort to focus, on, focus our thoughts 
on Jesus, to fix our eyes and our thoughts on him and not on the impossibility of our situation or uh, finding, I guess, reasons or maybe excuses um, as to why we, we can't go, why we can't be um, a messenger of the gospel in our situation. Um, and instead of that, what we do is we fix our eyes and our thoughts on Jesus because whatever we fix our thoughts on, that thing becomes magnified to us. And so if we will fix our attention and our thoughts on what God is saying about the situation or about the people that, that we are involved with, then his ideas and his thoughts and his perspective will be the thing that becomes magnified. And when we magnify God and his will in a situation, his perspective comes and changes us, it empowers us, and he actually makes it so easy for us to walk into that situation now because we have his perspective. And we're no longer afraid, we're no longer fearful, we are no longer being dictated to by what we see outwardly, but we know what our Father God's heart is for that situation. And so then really, after we've done that, it is simply a matter of making a decision to go. It's a matter of going, walking into that conversation, walking into that situation and representing the King and his desires and will in that situation. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, but for me, that really is always my starting point. I need to hear what, what God is saying to me about that situation or about that person. And I need to find what his heart is. Because once I know that, it's much easier to step into a conversation. So as we go um, about our everyday circumstances with our Heavenly Father's perspective, I want to just as a third thing, just encourage you. Um, determine that you are fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised and, um, and trust that he is wanting to work through you and he will back your going with his power and people will encounter Jesus. Don't fall into the trap of, of starting to entertain the conversation of, oh, well, what happens if God doesn't work? God is true to his word. He wants every person to come to know him. He will back his word and he will back you as you choose to go. He will back you with his power and he will enable you in all that he asks you to step into. So I just want to encourage you that... If you are in God's family, then you're called to go. You're called to go in every way, everywhere, every day. And uh, where you are today is where God will use you and work through you today. You don't have to go right now to the far ends of the earth to make disciples. There are people all around us. And God is inviting us to just ask him what his perspective is and to open our eyes to the opportunities. But we need to determine that we are a people called to go. So bless you, precious friends. Um, I just pray that you will remember that God is for you and he is with you. And I just want to bless you with the words of uh, the song, The Blessing, because it's scriptural and it is God's heart for you as you determine to not only know God and grow in him, but to go in him. And so may God's favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. And may God's presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you and he is for you. So therefore, friends, let's go.
Oh, it's great to spend time in the Word of God and hear uh, the Word of God being spoken to us. Uh, Do you know one of the biggest things that we need to do once we've heard the Word of God is find out where our actions now need to fit with the Word that we've heard. And I want to encourage you to take time to do that, uh, to press into your relationship with the Lord. We're never going to get to the end of knowing Him uh, ever, but especially this side of heaven. So there's an endless amount of room where we can grow in our relationship with Jesus. And I just want to encourage you to do that, whether you already know him or whether you're just discovering who Jesus is. Press into your relationship with him. You will not regret it. And the word of God really helps us to do that. So God bless you. We hope to see you back next week.